Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep, the makers of bedding and mattresses that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently delivered right to your doorstep. We've had our Helix Sleep mattress for over a year now and our backs feel supported and we're getting terrific sleep. So everybody is different and I took the Helix Sleep quiz to enter my sleep preferences and my needs along with my husband's and the Helix Sleep quiz matched us with the Helix Sleep Dusk Lux. It's so great to have a mattress that fits our needs. For instance, I happen to be a side sleeper, I prefer a firmer style mattress, and I share my bed with my husband. My husband also entered in his sleep preferences and needs, and we're getting great sleep. We've had it for over a year now, and I'm one of those people that sleep is super important. I really need a full night's rest to give me the energy that I require for the next day, and I find that I'm pretty energetic, so I need a full night's sleep, and my Helix Sleep mattress gives me that. And if you compare it to our old mattress, which we inherited and <laughs> while it served us well, it really was time for it to be replaced. Besides getting great sleep, another thing I really like about our Helix Sleep mattress is that it arrived conveniently packaged, rolled up in a cardboard box, which made it really easy to maneuver, especially up a narrow flight of stairs. And I was able to install the mattress myself. Helix Sleep offers a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty, and there are financing options and payment plans. Another great thing is if you live in the United States, Helix Sleep will deliver your mattress right to your doorstep for free. So if you'd like to start getting great sleep, click the link down below or head over to helixsleep.com slash to receive 20% off your mattress and two free pillows. Big thanks to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video and for allowing me to make better videos for all of you. So today we are going to be tasting a selection of frozen foods from Trader Joe's. Now, if you're not familiar with Trader Joe's, Trader Joe's is a chain grocery store that offers kind of an eclectic selection of items, including fresh items, but lots of prepared things, lots of snacks, lots of nuts, and lots of frozen foods. They are known for their good quality and reasonable pricing, and again, eclectic selection. So I've been going to Trader Joe's for a very long time. I felt like even before it became incredibly popular and all the employees wore their Hawaiian shirts. They would ring the bell and the decor in the one that we went to was kind of seafaring to go along with the Hawaiian shirt theme. So relatively recently, a branch of Trader Joe's has opened up in Providence and I was very excited about this because I love to get mostly nuts and things from Trader Joe's. If you wanna see me do a Trader Joe's shop, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want to see if you're interested in the subject of Trader Joe's. I go there pretty regularly. I get things like rice milk, lots of nuts. I make granola, so I like all those nuts and shredded, unsweetened shredded coconut. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there are some other things that I like to get there especially. And one of those items includes this. These are the chicken and cheese tamales. I've been buying these since my children when were first starting to eat food. They love them, I love them, they're super convenient, they're tasty. I buy several of these and keep them in the fridge. My kids can eat one each, I microwave them and they like it with rice. So I chose some other frozen foods that I've read are quite delicious, tasty and popular. So we'll be tasting those for the first time, but these I've had many, many, many times. So I guess since I have this, I should try this first, the chicken tamales. Although this is less exciting for me. Well, I have it here. So this is how I prepare these for my kids. Pretty simple. Let me show you how I do this. Couldn't be any easier. Open the package. Chicken cheese tamales. Two of them inside. Here is the tamale. It's wrapped in a corn husk. You can see the masa and the chicken peeking out. They also have a beef and a chili, green chili and cheese one. I prefer the chicken. That one's our favorite. We've had the others. So we take a damp paper towel and we wrap it up. So all microwaves are going to be a little bit different, but typically I place this in the microwave for two minutes, then I flip it over and give it one more minute. So my microwave oven is 1100 watts, so you can adjust your heating times accordingly. Let us place this in the microwave. Alrighty, we are back with our chicken tamale. So we are going to take the blanket off of it. Look how steamy hot it is. So hot. 
and then it's wrapped in its corn husk and I've made homemade tamales before and homemade making these is such a labor of love so much work to make alrighty so here it is steaming hot although you can't see it but here we go I'm gonna cut it right in the middle so you can see what it looks like oh look at that bite beautiful fluffy masa there's a piece of corn shredded chicken so I should have mentioned this earlier but before I even taste anything I should say that I am not here to be the arbiter of authenticity I'm simply going to give you my opinion of whether I think it's tasty or not I can't tell you if it tastes exactly like it should or not or so on and so forth because I didn't grow up eating tamales I just know that these ones are delicious before I even taste it because I've eaten so many of these but the other items I have not tried before so they'll be my first taste test so I will give you my opinion on what I think how they taste and describe to you as best I can what they taste like yeah all I can tell you is whether or not I like it and why I like it and with that let's see if these taste as good as I remember chicken tamal here we go itadakimasu mm-hmm 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 scrumptious mm. it's actually a little bit salter than I recall because typically in my family we eat this with rice we would like to kind of mush it all together now don't come after me perhaps that's not typical or the way you're supposed to eat it but that's how my family enjoys it and that way I find they're not overly salty at all um, but having said that it's absolutely delicious the chicken is tender mm, and shredded and mixes with the masa so nicely it's not separated at all it's really well incorporated homogeneous flavorful my children eat this so it's not that spicy at all there are bits of corn in there for some texture the masa is fluffy well seasoned not dry at all there's a little bit of kind of a chile pepper flavor mm, it's just so good i need to stop because i'm tempted to eat this whole thing but i've got lots of food to taste but the chicken cheese tamales are delicious love them okay one more bite so good <laughs> so very good mm -hmm. alrighty next let's try Ooh, this is one I really want to try this and this I really want to try I believe it's relatively new it's Trader Joe's tteokbokki and their Korean spicy stir-fried rice cake now I've tried a version of these from H Mart it was pretty good if you haven't seen my H Mart Korean frozen food video I'll put the link to that down below but we're gonna try the Trader Joe version and see how it is so the directions say you can air fry them which I appreciate because that means the rice cakes couldn't get a little bit crispy and we're gonna set it to 400 and I'm gonna do it for a total of six minutes okay so I'm gonna start that okay so my air fryer requires a little bit of preheating yours may not we can do a total of six minutes in the air fryer Here's the package of the tteokbokki. Nice, super simple. Sauce, rice cakes. So while that's going, I'm also gonna need to heat up the sauce. So here's the sauce and I'm just gonna squeeze it out into here and we'll warm that up that up that won't take any time at all okay so this is heated up I'm gonna spray the bottom of my fryer with some oil and add the rice cakes and then spray the tops okay now back in the air fryer for three minutes we're gonna turn them around shake them shake them three more minutes okay alrighty lovelies we are back air fryer has just beeped and <laughs> look at my little rice cakes okay my sauce is bubbling away and here are my rice cakes out of the fryer you can see how they've puffed up and crisped up a bit on the edges now we're gonna dump those yeah don't do that don't dump parts of the air fryer into your food 
Okay, now we're going to stir these around to coat in the sauce, and that's it. Oh my, that is looking luscious. Look, that looks great. Isn't that so fast? It's like seven minutes altogether. Look at that. Mmm. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a little bowl and have some of this. Oh, it smells great. Looks fantastic. Nice encoded. Alrighty, Trader Joe's Tokpoki. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Scrumptious. I think I like this version better than the one I tried in my H Mart frozen food video. First of all, the texture of the rice cakes is really great. Because we crisp them up in the air fryer, there's a little bit of a kind of resilience on the outside. It's no longer crispy because we put the sauce all over them, but mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a little bit of crispiness, but they're wonderfully chewy. The texture is similar to mochi if you have Japanese mochi rice cakes before, kind of similar to that, but even more of a firmer bounce, more of a kind of bounce rather than a stretchy kind of elastic chew. And the sauce is lovely. I love it. Mm -hmm. In terms of how spicy, if you've ever had Shin Ramyun before, the Shin brand of Korean instant noodles, it's about that spicy. So pleasantly spicy, but not enough to make your experience uncomfortable. But the balance of sweet, savory, spice in here is really great and texture, really great bouncy texture of the rice cakes. Love it. Mmm. Mmm. Next, let's try these. And these are Trader Joe's mini vegetable samosas. So again, and I'm gonna try eight minutes. Oops. Here are the samosas, and there looks like there's 12 of them. I'm gonna make three. Okay, on. I don't like that you have to wait for this to preheat. It's kind of a bother. So, I'm gonna set this aside. Aha! Veggie samosas into the air fryer. So, I'm gonna put those in for six minutes, and then halfway I'm gonna give them a turn. And while that's going, I'm going to taste this. And this is Trader Joe's vegetable pad thai. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? And this has vegetables, rice, noodles, and tofu in a savory, sweet, and spicy sauce. So there it is. So we're gonna open the corner, heat this for two minutes, and then pull back the film, stir, replace, and then cook it for another two minutes. Couldn't be easier. All right, let's do that. Two minutes. Beeping of the dueling appliances. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so pad thai is done. And I have to say, I was impressed when I had to stir this midway with the bean sprouts that I found at the bottom. Yes, I love the bean sprouts in pad thai. Yes, that combination of that crisp, cool vegetal crunch with the chewy, stretchy, warm rice noodles. Mm -hmm. And they're here. That looks pretty good for microwave dinner. There's the bite. Let's give it a taste. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. Did you hear the crunch of the bean sprouts? Yes, it's still crunchy. Delicious and very garlicky as well. The bean sprouts are crunchy, very garlicky in flavor. Not too sweet. Sometimes I find pad thai made too sweet, but there is some sweetness, but not too sweet. Mm -hmm. And very flavorful. Mm -hmm. Delicious. I think what I'm most happy about is the bean sprouts. I'm really happy to see them there and that they have a great crunch to them. Mm -hmm. I would buy this one again. So I forgot to mention in the beginning how much these items cost. So I'll be sure to include an overlay so you get an idea of the cost of these. And in my opinion, they're pretty economical and so far super tasty. I would buy all these so far again. I would. Mm -hmm. Yum. Okay, now, yes, I'm coming. 
Air fryers remind me that my samosas are ready. Check them out. Samosas. Oh, hot. Oh, hot. Yo, look at those. Aren't they cute? Little triangles of yumminess. So these are called mini samosas because they are smaller. Typical ones might be three times the size all combined, but look at that. Look, it makes a beautiful hexagon. My kids especially love samosas. Alrighty, here we go. It's Taki Moss. So hot. Couldn't even get a bite. All right, let's try again. So hot. Oh, my God. So the exterior of the samosa is made with a wrapper that's similar to spring rolls, the deep fried spring roll wrappers that are quite thin and parchment like. They have a nice thin crispness to them. There are several layers. It's not like a dough that's been formed and then fried. So it's like a light crispness. <laughs> These are called vegetable samosas, but I almost think they're more like pea samosas. I would say the majority of the vegetables, pea and carrot. Wow. Nicely seasoned, good amount of salt. I definitely recommend cooking these either in the oven or in an air fryer because for me, a lot of the samosa experience is that really crispy crust on the outside. Hot, so hot, oh my gosh. Alrighty, the last item I'm going to be tasting is this. And this is pajum, otherwise known as Korean style scallion pancakes. They look fantastic and I've heard wonderful things about these. So, get my trusty air fryer out. Alrighty, my pajun is ready. Gosh, this air fryer does a beautiful job crisping things up. Look at that. Ooh, boo, boo, boo. That looks lovely. Ooh. Yep, 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 yep. That's that's frozen. Ooh. I can feel its crispness. Alrighty, here we go. It's the documents. Did you hear that crispiness on the edges? Really good. I did six minutes in the air fryer. I think you go to seven or eight. The middle part isn't as crispy as the edges. So I think that could be developed if you just give it a little bit more time. Having said that, it's still delicious. Very, very tasty in terms of, there's a lot of green onions in there, scallions. So it's a nice oniony flavor, but it's still subtle. It's not like overpowering. Mm -hmm. When I make these at home, I like putting a little bit of gochujang on top, a little bit of like chili paste on top. So I'm really craving that mm, for a little bit of spice. But these are nicely seasoned, not too salty. It's not quite enough for me to, as a meal, perhaps with a, a bowl of rice and a cup of soup, then definitely, but just as is, not quite enough. But pretty stinking great for just having to pull these out of the freezer and air fry them. Mm-hmm. Way better than fish sticks, even though I do have a soft spot for fish sticks. Ate them as a kid on occasion. I remember putting them in the toaster oven mm -hmm, and kind of not liking the smell that came out of the toaster oven, but really enjoying the fish sticks, you know what I mean? You're kind of conflicted. You've got those little feelings of ambivalence. All right, I don't feel that about this. These are delicious. <laughs> Where does my mind go? I don't know. Alrighty, my lilies, there you have it. Five things from the frozen food aisle at Trader Joe's. I would definitely buy all of these again. Let me know in the comments if there are things that you'd like me to try. What are your favorites? I want to know your secrets. Tell them to me. And thanks so much to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. Click the link down below or head over to helixsleep.com slash to receive 20% off a mattress of your choice and two free pillows.
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next video. Toodaloo, take care, bye. Oh, what a mix of flavors for my lunch today. Wow, all of them are so good though. Crispy, crispy. Thumbs up.